When I was a boy, I used to love to come to my grandmother's house. Everything was so peaceful. And I remember once being on the back porch of my grandmother's house, and I asked my grandmother why there were so many different races. And she said, well, son, because we're all flowers in God's garden. Some of us are roses and some of us are daisies, but we're all flowers in God's garden. And that was enough for a child, but it wasn't nearly enough for a man. I spent all my life trying to find out where those flowers were in God's garden that looked like me, and I couldn't find them. I couldn't find real flowers. I found figures. I found figures such as St. Martin de Pours. He's always portrayed as a fellow who was surrounded by little cats and dogs and little birds on his shoulder. It wasn't what I would call a manly man. And so I had all but given up on finding these flowers in God's garden that looked like me. My wife and I lived in Atlanta, Georgia, many, many years later. And we had a friend who lived in Richmond, Virginia, and he invited us to come and visit. So we, we drove all the way to Richmond, Virginia. We finally got to Richmond. It was about 6 o'clock in the evening. When we got to John's house, he was so excited. He said, oh, you know, I just found this church. I want to take you by it for the Vesper service. And I thought, oh, no, I don't want to go to the service because John was a white guy. And I can tell it was going to be a white church. And all these people were going to be so happy to see me as a black person in their church. They would be singing Kumbaya. It would be a very unpleasant evening. And when we got there, um, we walked up to the little church, and it was a house. It was a house church. And I thought, this isn't even really a church. And we walked up the back stairs, and I thought, oh my goodness, I am not going to like this evening. I was working myself into a little bit of a frenzy, a little reason to not like this church. And I was mumbling, actually. And my wife said, be quiet. People can hear you. And we came into the church. And there, was, there were three women who were singing in the choir. They were singing some sort of song that I didn't know. I think it was in a foreign language. At first, I thought it was in a foreign language. And I thought to myself, three women? This is not even a choir. And then I began to listen to what the choir was singing. And the choir sang, Rejoice, thou through whom God will flash forth. Rejoice, revile of fallen Adam. Rejoice, redemption of the tears of Eve. Rejoice, thou bride and wedded. I had never heard such words as these before in my life. And then the ladies went on to sing. She makes most eloquent orators as dumb as fish. And I thought, oh my goodness. I had never heard such simple, profound, and precise words in all my life. So I had begun to warm up just a tad to this service. The priest comes out of these doors, and he's swinging incense. And I thought, oh my goodness, this is not good. And I thought, I don't like this service now. I really don't like it, because this all this incense. He's probably covering something up. Incense always suggests that, that you're masking something to me at that time, of course. And then the people in the choir began to sing, and they sang, let my prayer arise as incense before thee, the lifting up of my hand as an evening sacrifice. And I immediately recognized it. I knew that was from the Psalms. And so I thought, hmm, maybe this is okay. They're quoting scripture, even in their song. And then I remember John the Baptist father, who was burning incense when the angel of the Lord appeared unto him. And I thought, well, maybe it's not so bad. It's not so bad. And then I looked at the priest, and beside him on the icon screen, beside the picture of Jesus, there was a, an icon of St. Moses the Ethiopian. St. Moses was black, just like me. He had nostrils just like mine. He had lips like mine and nose like mine. 
and skin the same color as mine. And I thought, oh my goodness, I had never seen such a thing in my life. And on the other side of the priest, there was another set of icons. And one of those icons was of St. Cyprian of Carthage. And there he was, black, just like me. His skin was a little different hue than mine, but it was definitely brown. And so it sort of showed me the different hues of our people. And he had hair like mine. And he was standing there in such a pose, a full-figured, half-stature icon of another flower in God's garden that looked like me. And I turned to the priest and I said, what is this? You know, you would think maybe it was some Afrocentric church. Some people who would who, who just made a point of portraying these figures as black so that they could, you know, maybe prove to themselves that they were black saints. But he said, oh no, these are traditional icons. They've always been in the church since the first centuries. And this is how they look. This is a modern version, of course, but this is how it would look from the prototype. And, and I thought, oh my goodness. And he pointed back in the back and he said, and this is Saint Peter the Aleut, who was an Aleutian Indian. And this, these are the saints from the Boxer Rebellion in China, and they look like Chinese. And this is a saint from Russia, and he looked just like any other white person. And these are the saints from China and India, and the whole room was filled with these saints from all over the world who looked like all the people of the world. It seems as though at that time, something from the eternal spoke to me and said, now you see the flowers in God's garden that look like you.